okay my dear students today you can just see the lengthy methods given in the books okay so you can see the lengthy method given in the books here i will tell you a super simple shortcut where you can solve the problem without pen and paper okay so let us go ahead with a shortcut given by me you can just see here you can see this equation okay you come uh, write the equation and compare here now 5t minus 2t square okay so now you can compare this with s is equal to ut plus half at square okay so what you need to do is compare these two okay so you can compare with uh, what is said to be half a with minus 2 you can compare these two equations then you will get directly a is equal to minus 4 meter per second square that's it such a simple question why you need to do diff differentiation and integration which will trouble you especially medical students are going to suffer a lot because of this type of methods Oops. so I, I want to make this super simple so hope you have enjoyed this answer thank you my dear friends you can just see this previous year question asked in 2010 here okay so in this question if you observe okay so what are you going to see you can just see you know so which of these vectors given here are resembling the parallelogram law you can just see you know what is the parallelogram law in this if you observe e vector can be imagined here okay and what else e vector can be imagined here and f vector which is given here can be imagined here so these three vectors are resembling exactly like a parallelogram so therefore and that too f is taken as resultant so i can write f is equal to e plus b so therefore your correct option is going to be the option thank you very much my dear students i would like to prove that physics is the most easiest subject in this world that is my mission now you just see here in this question what is going to ask he has asked that before i 0.5 is there that means uh, you know this is a unit vector and uh, the dimensions of the length of a cuboid is taken as 0.5 okay the length of a cuboid is 0.5 then what is the dimension of breadth of a cuboid uh, it is 0.8 along the z j uh, along the I mean y axis this is x y and z axis so along the y axis what is the dimension given here it is this dimension is taken as 0 0.8 and along the z axis uh, in this direction it is a unit vector k its dimension is c that means he has given this as length this as breadth and this is height you know that the diagonal of a cuboid is this one this is a diagonal of a cuboid which is given as it is l square plus b square plus h square this is a diagonal of a cuboid and uh, that is unit vector that means the magnitude of the diagonal is one unit that is the meaning of this question actually okay so uh, let us see what is l l is 0 0.5 whole square and b is 0 0.8 whole square and h is we don't know that is c square is equal to 1 under root so if you square on both sides if you square on both sides uh, this square root gets cancelled here now let us see what is going to what you are going to get now so after that you can find out the value of c after solving this you can find out the value of c and uh, you will be getting c1 minus 0 0.5 whole square minus 0 0.8 whole square under root and you will calculate the finally you get the value of c as 0 0.11 so this is the method of understanding the problem in terms of mensuration in terms of diagonal of a cuboid hope you have understood thank you very much have a okay my dear students see the short trick from my own book here now if you observe the short trick here you can just see the question here in this question it is said that horizontal range and maximum height of a projectile are same okay and now i will prove that this problem can be solved in a super simple way and there is a shortcut also i have selected one book in which my shortcut if you observe here what is that shortcut here if he says that range and uh, range is n times of the height and you write the formula for range and height and simplify at last you will get that r is equal to n times of h if r is equal to n times of h the shortcut here is you have to consider tan theta is equal to 4 by n okay after simplifying this you will get tan theta is equal to 4 by n that means theta is equal to tan inverse of 4 by n but in our problem if you observe it is given in our problem that range and height are going to be same what does it mean it means that from this formula if you observe if range and heights are same it is going to be equal to 1 that means our answer is tan inverse of 4 by 1 that means answer is going to be tan inverse of 4 so your correct answer is b option so what you need to do is you just have to remember this formula here tan theta is equal to 4 by n and sometimes he says that range is double to that of height if range is double to that of height uh, you have to consider that n is going to be equal to 2 here n is going to be equal to 2 that means at that time you will get theta is equal to tan inverse of 4 by 2 your answer is tan inverse of 2 so this is a universal formula which can help uh, of all these type of models hope you have enjoyed this shortcut thank you okay my dear students whenever these type of questions will come there is a shortcut formula to solve this problem you can solve this problem in fraction of seconds and feel that 
physics is the most easiest subject in the world. Now that type of feeling I want. Okay, so let us see what is going to happen now. So in this problem, it is given that y is equal to ax minus bx square. You can write like this. y is equal to ax minus bx square. And if you see here, in this projectile motion, a body starts here and it's take a complete projectile motion. But along the y-axis, the displacement of the body is going to be zero. There is no displacement along the y-axis because starting point is the same and ending point is also the same. Whereas there is a horizontal distance. So I have taken the coordinate system 0, 0, r, 0. I can take y is equal to 0 here. Okay, so I have taken y is equal to 0. Then what is going to happen now? ax minus bx square. So we're getting this one. So when you get this ax minus bx square, you have to find out the range here. So how are you going to find out the range? Okay. So what is going to be the x-axis here? No, x-axis is going to be, what is the dimension of x? Here x is going to be the range here. So x is going to be the range. Then what is going to happen? Let us see now. So here, you know, as ax minus bx square is equal to 0, here this x and this x square gets cancelled. Then what is left? Uh, minus bx is equal to 0 and a is equal to bx, okay? And x equal to r here. So we can write a is equal to br. This implies that r is equal to a by b. So this r is equal to a by b is going to be your answer. Hope you have enjoyed this answer. Hope you have enjoyed this problem. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Okay, my dear students. Today I would like to discuss about these two problems which are asked continuously in 22 and 23. That means you can understand the importance of this model here. This model especially. So how to understand and solve this problem with a basic knowledge without any by hearting of formulas here. What is the basic knowledge you need? You all know the vertical projection. So whenever you get a vertical projection, you will apply the formula u square by 2g. And in the oblique projectile, you know that here initial velocity along the y-axis is considered as uy, which is taken as u sin theta and ux is taken as u cos theta. Okay. So now here in this case, you know, vertical projection means you write h is equal to u square by 2g. The simple thing you have to remember here is here you have to write instead of u square by 2g, you have to write uy square by 2g, uy square by 2 by heart any formula for maximum height in oblique projectile. The simple thing is you have to write here now, h is equal to uy square by 2g and you know uy is nothing but u sin theta. So you can write u square sin square theta by, in the first problem, u square means it is given that 280 whole square into sin 30 whole square divided by 2 into 9.8. So if you apply this formula, you'll be getting the answer as 1000. Similar formula if you apply for the second problem, that is h is equal to u square by 2g, the same formula if you apply in the second problem also, you'll get the answer as 5 meters. You can just go and check it out. Okay. Thank you very much. If you like the simple way of explanation, then you can subscribe to my channel, prescribe to your friends and describe the comments below. Thank you very much. My dear friends, whenever these type of problems will come, where one body is resting on the table and one body is hanging downwards, and if there is a fr friction on the body which is resting, then you need to apply a very simple logic here, not a formula, a simple logic that if you want to find out the coefficient of friction, mu, okay? So if you want to find out the coefficient of friction, mu is equal to mass of the hanging body divided by mass of the resting body. So what is the mass of the hanging, hanging body mb? What is the mass of the resting body ma according to this problem? So therefore, you know mu is given here. How much it is given? Uh, mu is given as 0 0.2 and mass of the body, we have to find out b and mass of the body which is hanging is given here. Block Mass on the resting on the table is given that is 2 kg. So therefore, mass of the body hanging is taken as a 2 into 0 0.2 which is nothing but 0 0.4 kg. That's it. Then what is the logic behind this? This is the form which this is the logic and how did this logic come? What is the, the concept behind that? I will discuss here now. So the concept behind that is very simple that whenever the bodies are at equilibrium, that means downward force and friction force are same, then you have to apply that friction force is equal to weight of the body. Weight of the hanging body is equal to friction force which is said to be static friction. So both will be same, then only bodies are getting balanced, they are not coming down. Therefore, static friction formula is mu into ma into g, which is equal to mb into g. That's it. This is simple formula. This is simple logic behind that, simple concept behind that. We can cancel out g and g. Therefore, this implies that we write mu is equal to mb by ma. So this is not, nothing but the shortcut formula which I have discussed just now. Okay. So there is not a rocket science here. It's a very simple formula which I have been discussing here. So therefore, this is going to be our uh, shortcut formula. Okay. Mm. My dear students, you can just see the problem given here and you can just see the solution also which is given here. See, instead of following this much uh, big solution, what I mean to say, this much big solution, time taken for smooth is taken as T and time taken on the rough inclined plane is taken as TR. In the problem it is said that twice, okay. So a time taken for rough surface, to slide down the rough surface is definitely more than the time taken on the smooth surface, okay. It is more. So 
there is a general formula to solve this problem instead of doing all these lengthy process. What is the general formula? We shall discuss about that. What is the general? You know, time taken for rough surface is n times the time taken for smooth surface. If it is n times, then the general formula is mu is equal to tan theta into 1 minus 1 by n square. This is the formula. This simple logical formula can help you to bypass all these lengthy methods. Okay. So how can you solve now? If you want to find the coefficient of friction, simply you have to write mu is equal to tan 45 because it is given that the inclined plane say that is a smooth or a rough the theta is going to be same that is 45 and uh, it is twice n is equal to 2 so in the problem it is given that twice means n should be taken as 2 here so 1 minus 1 by 2 square that's it so mu is equal to 1 1 by 1 minus t square I mean 2 square is going to be how much okay so 1 minus 1 by 4 which is equal to 3 by 4 is going to be your answer okay so 3 by 4 is going to be your answer therefore 3 by 4 is nothing but 0 0.75 so you can bypass this lengthy method if you know the simple logic that refractive I mean coefficient of friction is equal to tan theta into 1 minus 1 by n square this formula if you know this logic if you know you can save a lot of time and solve the problem in just 5 to 10 seconds my dear students are you facing difficulty in solving the problems of friction? Are you totally confused about how to draw a free body diagram? Then you are at the right place. You can solve the problems of friction without any free body diagram also directly by using a simple logic. What is the simple logic? Let us discuss here. Now here, one block is hanging downwards, one block is resting on the table. And you know the block which is hanging is 6 kg, the one which is resting on the table. Then you can find out the tension T by using a simple logic. No need to by heart any formula or no need to draw any free body diagram. A simple logic, a basic formula of Newton's second law can be used to solve this problem. How? Let me discuss about that. So here, you know tension is equal to mass into gravity, m into g. But here in this case, you have to write the formula tension T is equal to reduced mass into net, net gravitational force. What is a net gravitational force or net acceleration? The simple thing you have to do is, you can write tension T is equal to reduced mass means m1 m2 by m1 plus m2. So product of the masses and sum of the masses is taken as reduced mass. And net, net acceleration is nothing but it is acceleration because of hanging body that is G and the acceleration because of the resting body because of friction force and that is taken as mu into G. As friction is there you have to multiply mu to G that's it. So your formula is ready. You can just substitute in this formula and get the answer very, very easily. Let me discuss about that. So tension T is equal to M1, M2 means 6 into 4 by 6 plus 4 into 1 plus mu is nothing but 1 plus 1 by 4 into G you can common out here. Okay. 1 plus mu into G you can common out. So 1 plus 1 by 4 into 10. That's it. Okay. Or you can just write uh, like this also. You can write here 10 plus mu is how much? 1 by 4 into 10. Okay. So if you apply this formula, directly you will get an answer. Okay. It's very simple, very easy logic it is. No need to buy hard anything. Basic Newton's law will help you to solve this problem. Now, 24 divided by 10 if you common out 1 plus 1 by 4. So 10 gets cancelled. 24 into 5 by 4. So after LCM, it will get 5 by 4. 4, 6 are 24. So tension T is equal to 30 Newtons. So you have solved this problem without any free body diagram. And how many problems you want me to solve in this chapter, just comment below. What type of problems you want, what type of chapter you want, just comment below and you just prescribe to your friends, describe the comments below and subscribe to the channel. Okay, my dear friends, how can you solve this problem in just single step logical formula? So here, there are two cases. In one case, the force is acting in one direction. In the other case, the force is acting in the other direction. But in both the cases, is asking us to find out the tension at the middle of the two blocks. So let us imagine the tension at the middle of the two blocks is taken as T here, okay? So we need to find out the T here. So to find out the T here, what is the logic behind that is? If you want to find out first case, let us imagine. Let us take this as the first case and this as the second case. So in the first case, you can just take tension T in the middle of the two blocks is taken as F1 force. Means 500 Newtons uh, acting in this direction. That is 500 into M2. This side force, but this side mass you have to take. Opposite side mass you have to take. And the mass is taken as 15. Plus, as the other side, there is no force that is taken as 0 into 10 divided by the total mass that is nothing but 15 plus I mean 10 which is going to be 25 so 15 that is 500 into 15 divided by 25 ones are 25 20 times so your answer is going to be 300 newtons in the first case in the second case you have to find out the tension here that means in the second case the force is acting from this, this side it is the pulling force whereas this side there is no force so therefore as this side uh, there is no force you have to consider that as 0 into 10 plus sorry 0 into 15 because this side there is no force but opposite mass you have to take so you have to take this side force and that side opposite mass so therefore 0 which is not acting and uh, you have to take 15 
plus 500 into okay 500 is acting this side but you have to consider the opposite mass here that is 10 here that's divided by total mass that is uh, 15 plus 10 that is 25 so that is 500 into 10 by 25 so 25 1 times 25 2 times so your answer is going to be 200 newtons so 300 and 200 is going to be your answer so fourth option is going to be your correct answer hope you have enjoyed this method of solving a unique method a different style of solving Okay, my dear students, how can you solve this problem which was asked in 2015 NEET and this concept is available in NCRT page number 106. So it's asking us to find out the contact force between A and B when force of 40 newtons is acting this side and this side there is no force. So I have taken block B and C combined together that is 2 plus 1 as 3 kg I have shown here. Okay, 3 blocks is simplified into 2 blocks. One is A, the other is B plus C combination and the contact force is small f which is written with green color that is taken as small f here. Okay. So this is small f, okay, small f is there here, small f is going to the, f1 is going to be 14 here, so contact force is nothing but 14 into m2 plus f2 0 into 4, divided by m1 plus m2 that is 4 plus 3, therefore 43 by 7, your answer is going to be 6 newtons, so this is a simple way, one step formula, even you can solve this problem without pen and paper, if you remember the formula and you are good at math.